spring of 2020, as if this ridiculous year hasn't been bad enough, I just learned that now we have something called uh, murder wasps or, or death hornets or something like that. Um, I don't have time for that kind of stuff today. Today is about good things, the things that make us smile. And recently it has been the pistol caliber carbines or the pistol variations um, of typical you know, AR platform carbines. And I've got something really cool, new and exciting coming in for us to spend some time with here at the facility um, to do some direct comparisons and learn a little bit about some of the newer technology and, and what's coming forth in the near future. And it dawned on me, there may be a few things before we go running off into the sunset to, to explore that we should look into that are from the past. Like maybe, maybe the MP5. Another really common, really popular uh, nine millimeter. In this case, it is a PCC, it's an SBR. And uh, it's something that I put together from a flat several years ago. I'm sure we've done some video on it in the past. If not, I'm sure one of you are gonna let me know and we'll do more on it in the future. But we've got the MP5, same caliber, nine millimeter, very, very popular. And even going back a little bit further, some of you may have heard about the Uzi. This has been around for a couple of years as well. This particular one uh, is a submachine gun, but there are uh, SBRs that are available and there are pistol variants with braces uh, that are available as well. But I thought maybe before we got too hung up on running into the future to see what we could do to improve upon these things, let's take a little look backwards into the past and find out what's already been done. Just like our last range session, everything that we're, that we're using today is 9mm, 9x19, 9 Parabellum, 9 Luger, um, to stay within the same theme. The, the newer variants that we have coming in to continue the series are also in 9x19, but we're going to open it up and look at some calibers that are a little, okay, that are a lot larger, but the same size platform. For today, we're just sticking with 9mm. The Uzi, this is an early one. The Uzi was designed by Uzil Gal in the very late 1940s and by the early to mid 1950s it was already being fielded by special forces. Everybody knows what an Uzi is. Even if they don't, they think they do. This is one of those uh, guns that are representative of, of what it is and its name transcends what it actually is, like Jell-O. Every gelatin product is called Jell-O, even though it isn't. Uh, Mack trucks. Every big tractor trailer on the highway is a Mack truck, even though it isn't. And for the news, at least in the recent past, every submachine gun looking black short firearm was an Uzi, even though it's not. More recently, we've seen everything called an AR-15. So this might not resonate so well with some of you younger viewers, but some of you older folks like me are going to remember the days that everything Everything in a news story that was negative was an Uzi. So the Uzi, square receiver, very simple open bolt blowback mechanism. The bolt is to the rear. When you want to fire the gun, you squeeze the trigger. It allows the bolt to go forward. It picks up around from the magazine, chambers it, fires it, and then it recalls to the rear to start the process all over again. Very simple stuff. Very, very effective pretty darn accurate and extremely controllable. It only takes a little understanding of the forces of recoil to know that a gun that weighs anywhere from five to six to eight to nine pounds that's chambered in that little nine millimeter cartridge is gonna be very controllable. So what are some of the benefits of the Uzi? What is it that makes this gun that was designed in the late 1940s uh, still appealing today? Well, it's an open bolt. Very, very simple mechanism. Sometimes simple is better. There's not a whole lot to go wrong with it. When you squeeze the trigger, you're dropping a sear, which is allowing a bolt to travel. And with the submachine gun, that will continue until you let off the trigger and stop the bolt from moving again. Simplicity is a very good thing. Concealability. This is a pretty small package and it's functional just like this. You don't have to do anything else to utilize it. You can go ahead and shoot it just like this. If you want, you can also utilize the stock, which obviously opens up really quick. It's also 
pretty darn comfortable to use. So you've got a nice, heavy, stable platform, and there's not a lot to go wrong with it. And our friends at Bowers Group like to remind us that it's a good one to suppress too. This is the Bowers CAC9, and it's, it's ingenious. It actually takes the place of the barrel nut. So we thread the barrel nut off, and we replace it with the suppressor, which has a new ratcheting barrel nut built right into it. Along came the 1960s, about halfway through, 64, 65, 66, and the MP5 came to light, the German MP5. Another gun, again, originally introduced in a submachine gun platform that's over 50 years old, still runs like a top, and still incredibly desirable today. Unlike the Uzi, the MP5 uses a roller locking system. And we're not going to go into that in great detail today because one of the PCC AR type pistols coming in uses a delayed blowback system. And I'm gonna take that time and that particular video to explain the differences and the similarities between that and the roller locking system. But in short, what it does is it delays and retards the recoil forces from coming to the rear until the pressure is subsided in the chamber so the bolt doesn't unlock immediately and just come flying back causing excessive recoil. And this is the same type of locking mechanism used in all of the HK uh, guns of this type, uh, whether they're 5.56, whether they're uh, 308, uh, 9mm, 10mm, 40 s and w there have been all kinds of chamberings for this particular style of firearm. And they all utilize that same root roller locking mechanism. This roller locking system taming the recoil to the capacity that it does allows us to have a gun that's tickling five pounds almost half the weight of the largest of the uzis uh, and still has a nice comfortable controllable recoil impulse it also fires from a closed bolt and that's going to to translate to accuracy immediately with the open bolt gun you've got the weight and the mass of that heavy bolt returning to the front stripping the round from the magazine and chambering it before it stops and fires and and then returning to the rear you've got all that movement going on with the mp5 all that's happening is your trigger is dropping a hammer and contacting a firing pin to start that sequence happening. That's a whole lot less mass and weight moving before you take that shot than with that big heavy open bolt system of the Uzi. And just like the Uzi, the MP5 is a very easy one to suppress. This particular one is a three lug suppressor, a very early one made by AWC. Let's run a few rounds through each one of them in each configuration and let's look at some things close like the different recoil impulses and, and muzzle lift and uh, listen to the different sounds between suppressed and unsuppressed. I don't think there's a wrong answer to which one of these is, is the best. I think that that one is the one that you have with you at the time that you want to have it with you. Let's put some rounds down. So there's nothing there that isn't going to make you smile. 
where I don't believe that there's a wrong choice between these guns, I do think that it's easy to have a favorite. And I think out of those favorites, suppressed versus unsuppressed is, a, is an easy one for me. Although it's a hell of a tattletale downrange. If I'm missing those plates and I'm running a suppressor, you're going to know I'm missing those plates <laughs> loud and clear. So whether it is older technology, newer technology, whether you like the historical aspect of some of these things, whether you like the high speed, go fast um, abilities of some of the newer stuff, do you, man. Do you. Get whichever one you like. If you can, get them all because more is better. Too much is never enough. Nothing excels like excess when we're dealing with ballistics. So thank you for coming to the range with me today. Spring is finally here. Black flies, mosquitoes and all. Um, it's so nice to see the color green again. The leaves are going to be back on the trees before you know it. And uh, I'll be complaining about having grounds work to do. But that's cool. That's a good kind of complaining. Anyway, we'll be back really soon with the newer PCC innovations that are on the market today. And uh, we'll compare them to these old ones a little bit. And we'll see if people really are reinventing the wheel or, or making these things better. We're going to find out together. So I hope you enjoyed our little trip to the range today to take a little blast at the past, a little peek back at early innovation on the PCCs and similar guns. If you did, please click like. Share us with your friends in your vast social media universe. Subscribe to the channel both on YouTube and on Full30. You can visit us over on Patreon for some of the behind the scenes stuff when we're really active over there. And if you just like to talk guns every day, probably Facebook is the best place to do that at facebook.com slash gun test vids. Till next time, have fun and be safe.